let's do the route which will display the blog post. So in order to do this, let's go back. All we need to know is that this link here goes to post and then we're passing the ID of the blog post. And in this case, you could swap it with a slug in future if you wish to develop that as well. And now let's do that. So under the main.js, which is the all main route, we're going to create one more. So I'm going to copy this and maybe paste it around here. This is going to be a get route and it's going to be the post. And we're passing the ID. I'm actually going to copy this one here and paste it. And then remove all the comments. And in this case, let's change a couple of things. So first of all, we this is going to be the get route. And the page that we want to get is going to be called post. And then we can put the ID in here. So this is how we're going to grab the ID. And I'm going to show you how we can do that now. Then inside here, I'm going to leave the logos as it is. Maybe we could change it to the actual title. We'll have a look in a second. And to grab the ID, it's actually fairly simple. What we can do, let's move everything inside the try catch here, first of all. So like so. And now to grab the ID, what we can do is let, let's put a slug equals request dot param and then ID. This is how we grab the ID. Sorry, this is params. And now we can query the database with this ID. To do this, we can modify this one here. So post.find by ID. And then inside here in curly brackets, we can put underscore ID is what we want to query. And we want to query the slug which we're grabbing. And the last thing that we want to do is create a page. At the moment, we're rendering the index page, which is the home page. So in this case, I'm going to create a new one called post. So let's go back. And inside here, we can create a new page a new one called post.ejs and for the post i'm going to do an h1 tag and inside here we can use ejs so ejs out and then we can put data.title remove this one here and now i can do the article so let's say let's say article and inside here we can give it the class name of article Maybe the h1 needs to be inside as well, but then we can get the body text by doing ejs data.body, like so, and that's it. So if you go back to the website, refresh, make sure that everything was saved. And if we click on any of the blog posts now, we should be able to get the title and the blog post. I didn't add too much text, that's why there isn't much. And this looks overly large compared to the paragraph here, but that's something you can change with CSS. And now if you go back, and click on another one, you will see that it's all working. If we go back, in order to potentially change the local title, we could move it around here, first of all. So we could do this when we're getting the data. We could potentially just do data.title. And we could do the same for, well, we don't really have a short description. Maybe you can incorporate this into the database. So let's save this and let's go back, refresh. And now you'll see that the title of Node.js application is changed. So if I do Control and U to inspect the title, you will see that uh, this is working as well. Now that we have this done, let's have a look at how we can make the search work. First of all, I'm going to do the logic and then I'm going to show you how we can do the front end JavaScript to make the search pop out. So let's go back. And if we find the search CSS, first of all, in public CSS, style.css, search for search. And then here where we have visibility hidden and transform translate Y, let's remove this temporary so we can get the search. Let's go back to views, partials, and let's add a new partial called search. I'm going to remove everything. And inside here, we create search.ejs. So for the search, I'm going to wrap everything into a div with a class of search bar. And inside this div, we're going to have a container. And inside this div, we're going to have a container. So dot container dot container. And inside this container is where we're going to have the search form. So let's create a form and I will explain the rest. So for the form, the action is going to be slash search because this is the page that we want to display when we search for stuff and display the items. We also need a method of post. 
and I'm going to add a few classes. So class search form and this one has got form and then I'm going to put a row for search. Cool. So inside the form here, we're going to have our search bar. It's only going to be an input without a button. You can add a button if you wish to, but I'm going to keep this one simple. So let's put an input. And this input is going to be the type of search. And then we're going to have an area label. I'm going to put this on another line just so we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to add area label to search. Then ID is going to be very important so we can select it with JavaScript later on. Search input. The name is going to be search term. This is going to be also important when we press on the search bar so we can get the data out of it. And then I'm going to create a placeholder, which is going to say search the site dot dot dot. And that's it. Let's tidy things up so it's not this messy. And save. We need to include this in our main layout. So let's go back and let's go to layout and then main and I'm going to include this above our container in here. So we're going to do instead of header, we're going to put search. If you go back and if we refresh, you will see that we're getting the search bar. It doesn't look great. We could do it a little bit of spacing, but I can always fix this in CSS later on. Also, we are not getting a close button. So let's add that as well. I'm going to go back to partials, search, and then maybe after the form here, we can create a div with the class name. Well, let's do it as an ID and I'm going to do a search close. And then this is going to say close. Save this. Let's go back. And now we have a close button, which doesn't look great. We definitely need to style this a little bit better, but that can be done later on. So well, let's do the logic. So when we search for an article, we want to display the results. In order to do this, let's go back to keep this one open so we can reference it. But let's go back to the let's go back to the route and main.js. And inside here, we're gonna have to create a new route. So let's grab this comment and I'm gonna paste it inside here. And this is gonna be a post route, and we're gonna be posting the search term. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this one. So I'm gonna add in here and uncomment it. So the first thing that we need to do is change this to Instead of get, this needs to be post because we're going to be posting data. The URL needs to change as well to slash search. And we need to change the render page to search. So let's do the query. First of all, the title can be something like search. And now we can do the logic. So inside the try and catch here, we can do the rest. Let me move this inside as well. When we submit the search form inside here, we want to grab the search term from it. In order to do this, we can do let search term equals then request dot body and then dot search term like so. Let's first of all console log this. So I'm going to console log the search term. Let's comment this out and let's do rest dot send. And I'm going to do search term for a second. So if I go back and refresh, let's say we're looking for node, press enter, and you will see that our application is spinning and we're not getting anything. This is because we are unable to pass this data. And in order to be able to pass this data, we need to go back to our app.js file here and we need to add two more things. So we need to, under our database here, we can do in order to be able to pass data, we can add a few middleware. So app.use, and then we can do express dot URL encoded. And inside here, we can do extend it to true. And we need one more. So this one is going to be app.use. And then inside here, we do express dot JSON like so and close. Now we should be able to pass data through forms. So let's save this. Nothing else has changed. And if I go back to the search and refresh, you will see that we're getting node. 
because this is what we search for. Whoops. So if I search for something else, let's search for API, you'll see that we're getting API. So we're getting the search term, which is great. Let's close the app.js and now let's figure out the rest. Let's remove this. Now let's remove any special characters from this search term. To do this, we can do const search no special characters equals and then we're gonna equals this to the search term that we have here and then replace and i'm gonna copy and paste a regex here which removes special characters so now we can use this for our query instead of the search term and in order to do the query i'm gonna use the same thing as here so const data equals await post dot find but inside here we want to select what we want to look for so we can do all and then inside here we can say that we want to search into the title and the body the way to do this with mongoose is like this title and then we can put regex new and then rec expression and then we put the search special characters in here search no special characters sorry and then comma i so we can copy this with a comma copy this remove the comma from here and we can search in the body as well and then this is going to be exactly the same so we want to be able to search in the title and the body that's all good and now instead of res.send we can do the res.render and then we can render the search page and then we can render the we can pass the objects of so in this case it's going to be data locals and actually that's it data and locals save this and now hopefully we should be able to render this page now i actually didn't create this page so let's go back here and create it under views let's create one more page search.ejs and inside here let's create something very basic so i'm gonna do i'm gonna reuse the author css so author and inside here we're gonna do an h1 and this is gonna have the class name of author underscore underscore heading i'm gonna put search results and then for the search results let's create a section with the class name of articles and inside here we can actually copy the one from the index here let's copy this one here and paste it so we can list all the articles and then they will have the link as well which is great save this and let's see whether this works zoom out a little bit uh, i'm gonna look for node press enter and as you can see we get search results and we're getting all the results and now if i click on one we're getting the article which is great so search is working i want this to be hidden and when we click on the search button to display so for those of you who want to do the front end i'm going to do this now if not you can feel free to copy and paste it into the javascript file and then move on so i'm going to go back to let's remove everything i'm going to go back to the css and remove these so i want the search bar to be hidden to start with here we go it's hidden and now i want to be able to click on this button and animate the bar let's go to the header so partials header open the header open the search so we have them as reference this and then we can go to the javascript and script here perfect so inside the header so with javascript i want to add an event listener to this button here which is misspelled and i'm gonna fix this search btn okay so let's do that in all scripts here i'm gonna first of all i'm gonna do document add event listener dot add event listener dom content loaded so we want to when the content is loaded we want to do the functionality and this is going to be a function like so and inside here is where we're going to be writing or search bar functionality all right the first thing that we need to do is select this button so when we click it we can attach event listener on it so this is going to be a class name of search button in order to do this we can do const and let's get it let's call it all buttons maybe you can call it all search buttons or whatever document query selector all and then inside here we can do the search button which is dot search btn just like so 
we can do all shift and down to duplicate this. And now I want to be able to select the search bar, which is this class name here. So let's do that. Search bar, search bar, and we're done. The next thing that I want to do is select the input of the search here. So not only, um, so we can focus on it. So I'm going to get the ID of search input. And this one is going to be search input and get element by ID since we're using an ID instead of a class. And I'm going to put search input instead. Duplicate this. And this one is going to be the search close button. So search close button is has the ID of search close. Copy this paste, paste, and we should be good to go. Now we can attach an event listener on all available search buttons. In all layout, there is only one, but normally sometimes you get more than one. So I'm going to uh, do that. So we need to loop through each uh, button that we have on the page. So four, and then inside here, we can do var i equals zero. And then i, if i is smaller than all buttons, then length, we do i plus plus, and now we can loop through all buttons and give it an attach an event listener to them by doing all buttons and then i. So because we're looping, add event listener, and this is going to be a click event listener, and then this is going to be a function. And now the first thing that I want to change is the visibility from hidden to be visible. And then I want to add this open class. So the transform translate goes to zero from minus 100. To do this, we can go from here. We can do search bar dot style dot visibility. And then I'm going to set this to visible like so. Then we're going to do search bar dot class list dot add and then I'm going to add the open class name, just like so. And then the next thing that I want to do is set the attribute for the button. So where is the button? Under, under header here, we have area expanded set to false. So when the search bar is not expanded, we tell it that it's false. This is good for screen readers. And I want to turn this into true. So we're going to do this set attribute. And then the attribute is area expanded. And we need to set this to true. And the last thing that I want to do, when you click on the button, I want the focus to be straight on the input so we can start typing, especially if you're on mobile. So search input, and then we do dot focus. Oops. Like so save this and let's see whether this is working. Let's go back to a website, refresh, click on the search and nothing is happening. Let's have a look super quickly. So on the console, we're getting cannot set property of undefined setting visibility. So it could be a typo. Okay, and this is happening because I copied query selector all, but we only want to select one button. Sorry, we wanna we only want to select one bar and this and in this case we need query selector. Oops. Query selector, remove that. And now if you go back and refresh, then we can potentially click on search and we get in the search bar. And now we can just do the close button super quickly. So for the close button, we've already selected it here and we can pretty much do the same thing as here. So I'm going to do it inside here. And instead of that, I'm going to do, instead of all buttons, I'm going to do search close, remove the eye, add an event listener to it, which is a click event listener. Instead of search bar style visibility visible, we need to put as hidden. Search bar dot class list, we need to do remove. So we can remove the open class name. The area expanded needs to be set to false. And we don't need the focus anymore. Save this. Go back, refresh. Click on this. Click on the close. Okay, this is working. And if I search for something, node, we get all the results, which is great.